a Wendy Williams type thing of like, you know, we can hang out at night and have a drink, but I'm going to talk about this tomorrow morning. Now, of course, like, look, if someone's like, I'm getting a divorce in three weeks and it's not announced, I'm not going to reveal that type of stuff. But it was like these little innocent Wendy Williams like type of evenings. And so I'm like, I don't know if anyone's really interested in this. Then I launched my pilot episode, which was like me at a dinner in Florida with Kelly Dodd, Dolores Catania and Ramona Singer. So I was like, literally, this is a real dinner. And Rick Leventhal was there. And I'm like, does anyone care about this? So that's kind of how I launched of like, and people were like, wait, is this real? Like you were mm. at, like, Dolores was at dinner with Kelly and Rick. And so, okay, people cared. Welcome back to the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. I have been desperately wanting and seeking this interview for a while. So I am joined with the one the only, as he would say, I can't do it in the same voice though. Mr. David Yontef, reality TV guru from law school to getting his CPA license to now being all things pop culture analyst. David Yontef, welcome to the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. What is going on? Thank you for having me. I'm having my coffee. It's early in the morning and we are just, well, it's not even that early. We are just getting into it, right? Oh yeah, we're getting into it and I was just saying to David, first, I was trying to find the timeline because I'm like, when did I start really listening to you? When did I start doing Instagramming with you? Because I was so obsessed with your behind the scenes interviews. And it was in July. So That's almost it? a year. Wow. Yeah, it feels like a long time. But um, yeah, so I am just really eager to learn where your inspiration for Behind the Velvet Rope came from, because the interviews you now offer, they range the genres, right? And I know you don't always like to say that you only interview housewives, because it's not true. You interview like those from the talk. You've interviewed, interviewed the infamous Susan Lucci. I mean, you run the gamut. So like, where did the idea come from? Well, I mean, listen, first of all, growing up before law school, before becoming a CPA, before all this, like I was always into pop culture growing up. So it's no, you know, it just, it was a thing. I just, I love pop culture. If you ask me anything about politics, I have no idea what's going on in the world, nor do I necessarily really want to. I went to law school. I'm smart. I don't need to prove it to anyone. <laughs> so, I mean, growing up, it really was all about pop culture. And then you know, I went through a bunch of things with my career. And when I stopped practicing law, I fell into HR and recruiting. Like I ran recruiting at like Martha Stewart and like I was, I was corporate. So I worked for all these companies. So it's not like I went from law to this. I went into HR and recruiting before, but I worked for all these companies that kept merging. And then when my last company merged, I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I was already kind of hanging out with a lot of, listen, I mean, you live in New York City and you have more access to it than some people, you know, it's like LA, New York. So I was already hanging out with a bunch of people like from reality TV, you know, and listen, I'm like a business person. So it was always in the back of my mind, like, how is this going to be a business? I didn't really understand. I mean, Margaret Josephs is one who would always say like, you need to figure out a business with this because like you hang out with us. Like, what are you doing with your life? And she was I, really, I was doing nothing with my life for a minute. And so when I started this podcast, it really was, the origins really were a Wendy Williams type thing of like, you know, we can hang out at night and have a drink, but I'm going to talk about this tomorrow morning. Now, of course, like, look, if someone's like, I'm getting a divorce in three weeks and it's not announced, I'm not going to reveal that type of stuff. But it was like these little innocent Wendy Williams like type of evenings. And so I'm like, I don't know if anyone's really interested in this. Then I launched my pilot episode, which was like me at a dinner in Florida with Kelly Dodd, Dolores Catania and Ramona Singer. So I was like, literally, this is a real dinner. And Rick Leventhal was there. And I'm like, does anyone care about this? So that's kind of how I launched of like, and people were like, wait, is this real? Like you were mm. at, like, Dolores was at dinner with Kelly and Rick. And so, okay, people cared. So when I started, that really was the anthology. It was one day a week, a little story, another day a week, an interview. Then look, I'm a business person. You look at the numbers, mm -hmm. people, I think people now love these stories because I don't do them anymore. So I, I kind of just, it just like the interviews were the thing that kind of were taking off in the beginning. And then the podcast was already a thing, 
But when COVID hit, it really was like I doubled down and I just started doing a ton of interviews. And then we went to three days a week, four days a week. And now it's like we are five days a week. It is five interviews a week. And it really is a different, I still have, I have a Patreon where I tell all these little stories and I still do days of these stories, but it really, it's a different thing. It's like, it really is a like, who's next? And I'm going to interview. And it's like, I've turned myself into like a journalist really over three years. Yeah, you are a pop culture journalist. And I really like that you're explaining how you actually attending events is what formed this model. And I guess credit to Margaret Josephs. I knew she was very business savvy. Also, didn't Margaret have a really, um, well, I was going to say profitable, but a very long career in the fashion industry or marketing? Yeah. And like, she still does like, yeah. you know, the big Beth collection and all of that. Like, I mean, it, it's when you see Lexi and Margaret sitting around that table on real, I mean, that is Margaret's office. Like she has like a real job. I mean, it's real stuff is happening. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, speaking of Lexi, you can burst this myth, which is, is Lexi from both the UK and grew up in America? Like where does that amalgamation of her accent come from? Listen, everyone talks about Dorit's accent, right? Like people need to start talking about Lexi's accent. I love Lexi's right? accent. It's, it's a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, I love yeah. It. Right, like she is from the UK and like she, you know, she has like ties to Jersey. And so it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I know. It kind of, she does like fit in the Jersey accent in some area, um, you know, and I grew up in the Siggy Flicker area of Jersey. I'm from near Cherry Hill, so... We have you know, to love Cherry Hill. Gotta love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I grew up in Washington Township, but it's close. It's close. Um, I mean, that's the thing about Jersey. Like, all these people don't necessarily live near each other. Like, Margaret and Jackie live near each other. But, you know, New Jersey is a big state, guys. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure Melissa grew up in Tom's River or South Central Jersey. I don't know. She's not from, I don't think she's from the Bergen County, Franklin Lakes. No. That, housewives area no I, th I think tom's river i think but i'm just guessing all i know is when did you see the ultimate girls trip when oh, like yeah. kyle is joking about her accent and she says water like that's a very south jersey thing so i'm like oh melissa you still got your <laughs> you still got your roots um she does. yeah yeah well and okay so I can't let your first event go because you brought up Ramona Singer, you brought up Dolores Catania, and you brought up Margaret. So you form a relationship with Margaret at that dinner in Florida, or had you already known Margaret? No, Margaret, the dinner was Dolores, Ramona, God help us all, and Kelly yeah. and Rick. Margaret, I knew. So, I mean, I'm trying to think, you know, it's weird. Like you think back to like how you met certain people. Yeah. I know how I met Kim D. I don't, how the hell did I meet Margaret Joseph? I truly don't think that I know. Isn't that crazy? Was it a press event she was doing? Like a book I mean, or? It must have been not a book, but it yeah. must have been something like that. But now that you're saying this, I'm starting to be like, how the hell do it? You know how like you have people in your life and you're like, oh yeah, you I can't like, I'm like figure oh out friends that I met sometimes because it's just, they're around you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get well, it. Now, well, this is yeah. going to bother me all day now because. Oh I no, truly, you're going to have to message Margaret. I <laughs> Find the answer, don't David. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't even say it was through to Lord. I, I really don't know. I really can't think of it. Yeah. Well, so since we're going to stick with the Jersey, just because that is my home, home state, um, you know, now I'm on Long Island. So I'm kind of like a Jersey Yorker. I don't know. I have a name for myself, but that's <laughs> beside Long the point. Long Island's kind of the same thing, right? Oh, it's, Long oh it's I always tell Long Islanders, I'm like, this is just a smaller Jersey. It's true. Um, it's the same thing. It's just flipping Jersey horizontal. Um, they don't like that though. Long Islanders have a thing about Jersey and I'm still trying to understand why they're have such animosity. I don't get it. It's all to me. It's like Connecticut, New Jersey, Long Island, Westchester. It's all the same. The I only mean, thing the is little differences, but you all end up in, in New York central. Yeah. The only thing is Connecticut. Whenever I've been in Connecticut, cause I live on Long Island where the ferry is to Bridgeport. So like, actually soon I have to go to Boston. So I'm going to be 
taking that ferry, going through Connecticut. Um, I feel like Connecticut people are a little more reserved and definitely not as loud. Like there's this waspiness yes. that they're, especially on the shore. Like, cause that's yes. the only area I've been to. Yes, yeah. yes and yes. It's yeah. like the waspy version of Jersey and Long Island. Yeah, like I have Jersey family who moved to Greenwich. So, but speaking of Jersey family, cause I was trying to remember how did I first learn about the housewives and you digging into, you know, the events that you've been to with the housewives. And I realized, oh, that's right. One of my mom's cousins lives in Cota de Casa and um, knew when they were hiring the Orange County housewives and they were all mocking it. Like it was not received well by the community of Cota de Casa from what I remember. So like looking back at those beginning seasons, cause I didn't watch Orange County. My first experience was New Jersey. Really? Like, I don't remember any of the early seasons of Orange County. Like, so where did you start with your housewives viewing? Season one of Orange County. Wow. Oh, you were there. Okay. Well, you know, you know what it is? It's like, I mean, it, it really is a, the birth of Desperate Housewives in the OC. And like, I love the Desperate Housewives, the show on ABC with like Marsha Cross mm -hmm. and Terry Hatcher. And I love the OC. Little Misha Barton shout out. I mean, come on. So Amisha Barton will be on Behind the Velvet Rope one day. Trust me. She's like oh, yeah. on the, you know, like people are always like, who's your dream guest? And it, it changes because I get people that I really want. And then, but Misha is just one of those that floats around on the top of my list at all times. But so it was like the reality version of like Desperate Housewives, you know, in the OC. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how could this not be a great show? And then I started watching and it was like, oh, I mean, granted, it was so different that first season of the OC. I mean, there was no glam. There was no, I mean, it really was reality TV. Yeah. They don't even talk to each other. Which is interesting. It's like they're they're in their own, you know, bubbles. It's it was it was yeah. It was a whole different thing. And so, like, in a way, it was real. It was you know, it wasn't produced as heavily as all this stuff is now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I started to go back as like now I'm looking at it more as a media analyst, but. I have to say the Jersey beginning, I just will always be enthralled. Atlantic City reunions. I'm like, what happened to Atlantic City? Like Atlantic City is like not even featured anymore. I'm like, did they end their deal at the Brigada? <laughs> like, I mean, Andy just came into New York to record the re I'm like, oh. wait, it's in New and York, the Jersey reunion. It used to be, you know, it used to be in Long Island, believe it or not, for years. That's so interesting. So like, it has to be a, like, yeah. after Atlantic City with like Margaret into like that middle era, it was always in Long Island, always. Even with like Jennifer Aiden, like pretty recently, probably even four years ago. This year it was in New York City. I'm 99. Like they just filmed it. It was in New York City. Mm -hmm. They filmed it yesterday hmm. is that do you think that's because of a studio deal or production deal i mean i understand everything except new york city because i was thinking like long island is cheaper i mean i don't know if it's cheaper than new jersey but i don't know why it's in new york that makes that can't yeah. be cheaper so maybe just somehow it worked out i don't yeah. know but yeah. i do like the traditional like let's go to atlantic city like let's keep it as jersey i mean i also don't like when they all come, like Salt Lake comes and Dallas used to come. Like, I don't like when they come to Andy. I like it, like, keep it where it is. That's just my, if it's in Salt Lake, Andy should go there. I mean, yeah, I guess he, that's the power it's never of Andy in Salt Kong, Lake. <laughs> that we're flying seven people to New York versus Andy flying to Salt Lake. But I mean, I guess that's just like an ode to like how busy he is and his schedule and, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I even like now seeing Andy at the beginning scenes of reunions um, where he looks so exhausted. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't know if Andy's head is in the game, but. that That's a whole nother story. That's but a whole I mean, other story. Yeah. I mean, but apparently the Jersey reunion yesterday was just insane. And like, yeah. You know, so was security. Yeah. Was security actually called David Yontef? That's a really good question. Cause I mean, Kim D did claim on my show that they were going to have security. So 
I wonder, huh? And it's so funny because I've already spoken to Kim D this morning and she's like, you know, should I call Dolores? And I'm like, should I call Margaret? I mean, not that either of them would really reveal so much, but Kim is like, call Margaret. I'm like, you, you go call Dolores. Like you go get me something and I'll, I'll call Margaret. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you've interviewed Dolores. I remember, I think I definitely listened to that interview. It was really, oh, and you've interviewed her husband. You've interviewed Frank Catania Jr. Let me tell you something, you know, every now and then, listen, I really say this, like, you can't always tell. Sometimes I think people are going to be great and they are. Other times there are interviews like I'm not so excited about, but I mean, I'll do them and they turn out to be great. And other times you're like, this person is going to be phenomenal. And then you just, it's just flat. They're not. And maybe they're having an off day or whatever. But Frank Catania is just one of those where I thought it would be okay. I mean, I wasn't not interested, but I just blew me away. Frank Catania mm. blew me away. Just great. So much yeah. fun. It just really great. Yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing the video clips. Shout out to David Yontef's Behind the Velvet Rope YouTube. Um, and he's wearing, I think, a Wayne Hills sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm like, it's he's just who he is and really nice on Instagram. I mean, I have a thing for so Frank nice. Catania Jr. Um <laughs> I think I mean most all the gay men do. do I think you know I yeah. actually don't as much as I should so to speak well, like, so which I, listen, jersey guy do you like are you the most sexually attracted to David there's really only one Evan Evan oh he's, oh he's so handsome yeah I mean That's I actually it. really like Joe Gorga you I'm do? like I could have Joe Gorga Evan Frank Catania Jr. And I mean, I don't mind the others. It's just truly, if I had to, I mean, I think, yes. I mean, of course, Frankie Jr., but it's all about Evan for me, really, period. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I know we took a detour, but I have a feeling this interview is going to be a real a lot <laughs> fun of stream of consciousness, you know, just because there's so much going on in the Bravo universe right now with Jersey reunion. Beverly Hills is coming back May 11th. I know that I want to hear your opinion about the Roni announcement, but I'm sure you also have things coming up on your show because I know how you do it, David, with your in-depth, you know, behind the scenes. So anything coming up on your end with this Roni split of the shows? Well, you know, like I just had on Countess Luann. I just oh, yeah. had on Ebony. I have, well, I'm also, okay, so I am going to be doing a deep breakdown. You know, like I do my breakdowns. I am going to break this all down. It's yeah. coming up. I think, I don't know when this is going to air, but I think this week I'm breaking down just like, what does this look? I mean, the thing is, my podcast is we have guests. And then when we don't have a guest, I don't really do the gossip. It's not really, if I want to know something, I'm going to call you in. But I like to analyze like when I had Catherine Edwards on from Beverly Hills like I analyze from a producer's point of view of like this look I don't work for Bravo what do I know I'm not always right but I'm right a lot of the time it's more like this is what this means like let's mm. just get, calm down and this is just what I think from a business point of view this two Ronies what does this really mean is this really good news for everybody I mean, and who is this good news for? And who is this not so good news for? So we're having a show like that where I break down of like, you know, are we really going to ever see an OG, Roni? Are we, is this, is this legacy show coming and really ever and when? That's just my take on it. So I'm going to go do a deep dive and yeah. we're going to break up lots of players. Good, you know, good. Luann, Jill, we're going to, I'm going to tell you, I've heard from certain Roni. So we're just going to spill it all because- Listen, I mean, that for the moment seems to be a hot topic of what everyone wants to really talk about now. Yeah, well, and by the time this airs, um, it's going to be a little before Beverly Hills. So everyone should go to David's podcast because it'll be up on your podcast, everything you're talking about. Um, is it with Sarah Frazier, David? It will probably, yes. Oh, okay. Sarah I love Frazier. you and Sarah together. Oh my gosh, you're... And that's the thing, you're starting to go back to looking at the hot news in pop culture. And I do like how that kind of breaks from the other interviews. Like it's a nice shift to go back and forth. You know what it is? It's like, listen, I say that 
you know, because I do some consulting on the side for like podcasts that are just starting out and all this stuff. Like I could really say for me, year one from doing this show was just kind of like figuring a lot of stuff out. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I, I don't even know. I didn't know anything. Uh, literally i mean i'm talking about uploading editing like oh, yeah. i knew nothing but it, it worked the show was but i mean i could do with this all of this now in my sleep so year one was kind of like figuring it out booking guests just like okay people this is this is people are listening year two was all about you know let's have ads and some other stuff and really honing in and the guests got bigger and really honing in on like what like predicting like what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And now I can pretty much tell you like this guest, this is self-indulgent, David. No one is, I mean, it, they're, they're still going to listen, but those breakdowns, like people want that. Like these breakdowns with Sarah, where I'm just like talking about what this means in Beverly Hills, these chart and rank so much higher than so many big name guests, really, yeah. which I guess is a good positive thing. Now, listen, it's not even a little bit easier. It's like a trillion times easier to do my weekly recaps with Sarah about what it really means with Roni than to go book, you know, a Susan Lucci for a lot of reasons. Yeah. But that was such a wonderful. And that's the thing is like you're saying, you don't give that up. But yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I'm going into my second year of this podcast and Sometimes I thought, oh, the name of that author, that's going to be the one. That's the one. Everyone knows this author. And I'm like, wait, why is this other like discussion about, I don't know, thriller films or horror films? Oh, why is that skyrocketing? But it didn't have a name. It's really interesting. It's really weird. And yes, like, so, you know, I mean, I think, and that's what I love about my show being five days a week. Like, it will, my show will never be, will never be like, it'll never be not the interviews. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. interviews will always be like, I'll never not want to interview a Susan Lucci. One of my absolute positive favorite interviews I have ever done of all time, hands down, oh, yeah. icon, icon, icon. But, you know, this other stuff is good for like one of the days of the week. It's great. So, but I, I can predict now, you know, sometimes I'm a little off, but I can predict this huge name. This isn't going to chart. Listen, here, here's the bottom line. At the end of the day, I could have on a Susan Lucci every day and every other actress, Misha Barton, whoever you guys are thinking about as your favorite. I mean, it doesn't matter. My brand is Housewives. People want nothing from me more than Housewives. They love these other people. I just had on Kelly Rutherford from Melrose Place and Gossip. Like, they listen. They love it. They're thrilled to have these other people on. But at the end of the day, if I just said everything else is being scrapped and we're just doing Housewives, people would, like, be thrilled. It, literally. They, they yeah. would listen to a housewife that I had on from 30 years ago, who's like not been on the TV for this. It doesn't matter. That's what they want from me. So we're never, I'm going to, you started out by saying this, we're never going to be hundred percent that it's not going to happen. I'm always going to want the Kelly Rutherfords and Misha Barton's and, and Tori Spellings. And these are always going to be part of my show, but the bottom line is people want me to talk housewives and talk to housewives and talk to Bravo people. That is just my brand. It's just what the people want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I'll reveal my cards, which is you've been my mentor in all things, the pop culture universe, but also like me realizing, oh, you know what? I should reach out to pop culture experts, especially podcasters like yourself, Taylor Ferber. That was really fun. Dana Wilkie and I have an episode coming out um, because they're insiders and they also like you know the you know the game you know you approach it from like you said a journalist perspective that's why i'm less interested i'm less interested in someone who how shall i say this cuz you you've dealt with guests like this i'm sure you have who can't break contracts or who can't reveal too much behind the scenes like no i want to know the production side i like ex housewives because they don't have a stake in you know, going back on again. And, you know, that's a tough, they want to talk about the gossip. And I'm like, I'm not really interested in 
<laughs> who fought with who in that scene. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Listen, it's like a balancing act. Like, you know, ex-housewives chart just as well, if not mm-hmm. better at times than a current housewife. Like, you know, yes, the current housewives, you'll get stuff and they're great. I just had on Heather Dubrow. I mean, that's not an easy interview to get. She's not doing a podcast. She doesn't, like, well, she has her podcast. Yeah. Right. Like Countess Luann, I just had on Larsa Pippen, you mm-hmm. know. But yes, the current housewives are amazing and it's current and they will talk. But yes, when you get these ex-housewives, there's no contract. There's nothing that they can't say. And they're like, I don't have anything to lose. And here's what really happened. I mean, this is the deal. So you want to know what happened in that scene when cameras weren't rolling? And this is how it all works, people. And so that is great. Like, I do love that. And you would think like, who's going to listen to this housewife from 10 years ago? No, 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 no. People listen and they say things and it's, it's that it's, they're just as popular as the current people that are on. Yeah. Cause you're, they're pulling the veil, right? They're revealing the behind the scenes. And that's, I think why everyone, why I tuned into you first was, I want to get to the heart of it, you know? And um, yeah, well, is Catherine Edwards? Cause I love Catherine. I think those recaps you do with her, oh, the tea she spilled about Erica Jane. <laughs> Listen, it's like, I talk to Catherine all the time. Now, Beverly Hills is coming back, Catherine. So are we in, are we out? Listen, I don't know. I mean, like, I feel that I got, look, this thing where I have Kim D on my Patreon every week and she's breaking down. I think even if she was just recapping Jersey, people love it because it's it's the accent and Kim just tells it like it is. Then she sprinkles in all this real world stuff that she knows. And she really does know this stuff. People, I've been with Kim where some random person she's never spoken to has gotten to her and is like, I just saw it. Like people reach out to Kim and just tell her stuff. So it's a great, mix of everything that she's doing this every week for RHO and J and I'm really good friends with her. And I'm just like, why the hell didn't we think of this earlier? Catherine too. Like she's was on for all. I'm like, do you want to come back? Like everyone's like make Kim permanent, make Catherine. Like people don't realize nobody wants to be permanent. It's a lot of work. And yeah. I mean, they just, they just record and then go about their lives. I then have to sit with like a whole, and I, I don't really edit, like I don't edit things out, but you still have to, you know how it is. You have to prepare the show and get it out to the human. So, oh, yeah. but even so, so it's like, I am hoping Catherine is interested in something regular. For yes, Beverly please, Hills. Catherine. I'm, how about Catherine and Kim together once in a while? That would be great. Catherine, I mean, listen, Kim, I've already, and Dana. It would all be great, you know? And yeah. so it's like, yeah. I mean, look, if yeah. I, because Catherine wasn't really, no one realizes as regular as everyone thinks. She was regular for the reunion, but she wasn't regular all, all season. Like Kim, we have every, every freaking Saturday. Yep. Every week. But I would take Catherine. And it's so funny because I do have an ex Roni who has approached and is like, huh, maybe mm-hmm. I want to be the Kim D when Roni comes back. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if I'm like, we'll take you once a month. We'll take you once, whatever you want, sweetheart. So yeah. really, I think I now have something in the Roni category. It Ooh. really, these episodes, those episodes work where it's an ex-housewife for that franchise that is talking about it and sprinkles in some real world stuff. That's like almost like the gold standard. Yeah. That's what works the best. So yeah. I'm hoping, look, I do, I do. I think Catherine will be back for Beverly Hills in some respect. Yes, I speak to her all the time. If I said to her, like, I really need, you I need you to do this she would do it I just don't really get to that because like we're so backed up it's like it's up to you but I listen yeah. and I want Catherine I want do, Catherine do Catherine and Dana know each other Dana Wilkie and Catherine Edwards I think that well they know who each other is you know what it is I feel this is just me this is no shade to anybody oh, no. You're like, oh, please say Uh-oh, it. I'm ready though. No, no, say what you're going to say. Dana always feels that I shade her when I go on other podcasts, but Catherine and Dana are just like, I think the ex- so opposite. I, I don't see any, there's not, there's not one shred of similarity that I see in either of them. They're just so Do you want to expand upon that, David? <laughs> well, I mean, 
Dana, you mean just like their lifestyles? Is that what you're getting at? No, like Dana oh. lets it all hang out. Oh yeah. She'll just oh, yeah. say, like, in I, I mean this in the nicest way. So this is not shade, Dana. Like Dana, I tell her to her face, like she's like a gossip monger. She's like a sloppy bitch. And there's oh, no, God. there's no shade to that. She just lets it all hang out. That's why we love her. Catherine is more like she has a similar, you know, she's more like the. She likes to analyze, like, why is Rena doing this? Like, what is, like, with Catherine, it's like, we break the fourth wall, and it's more just like, Rena's fighting with this person because she wants her million-dollar paycheck and not, like, we don't take it like, this is real. We like to, kind of like the stuff you like. Like, we like to break the fourth wall. Yeah. And that's not to say I don't like having Dana on as much. I just think yeah. their two styles are different. I, I, I can't see them being on at the same time, but I'm yeah. all for it. I well, that's why I love Dana. Up. Dana does dish. You know, she's interested in the page six news. Yeah. And that's and not shade. That's just, no. that's her brand. And I love that. That's why, like you said, we love that aspect. And then I love what Catherine offers. I do think it would be interesting if they were in the same room. I do think it would be an interesting back I am, and forth. I am all for it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I tried last year. I, I tried. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, Dana told me a lot, not a lot, but Dana um, really loved when she saw you in New York and that whole Dana's Instagram lives. <laughs> she loves her Instagram live with you, David. And let's just say, I think you were more interested in the cocktail than you were interested in being on Instagram. Well, her like daughter was there also. And she's like, I mean, Dana was like walking around going up to people and her daughter is even like what is she doing i was like listen i am such a simple girl i'm like i i once that vodka hits my mouth i'm like everyone listen it's coffee all day and vodka all night so once i have my drink i'm like whatever dana wants it's fine like I, i'm very easy but she was literally walking up to strangers and i'm like yeah i'm not gonna do that and her daughter, I think, was like, I'm not going to do that either. Like, we're going to sit right here and have our cocktail and let Dana go do her thing. Yeah. These well, I just, anyone yeah, associated yeah. with housewives or anything. So I don't know what she was saying to each of them, but I was like, you go, girl. You yeah, go. no, that's good. She's networking. Um, uh, but I will say, and again, I don't want to be shady here because I, I love all of you. Um you know, and that's the thing where I stand with the housewives too. Like if they're nice, and I know you say this, David, and I think it's great advice. If they reach out to you and they're kind, I have no issue. Like I have had great messages with Lisa Barlow. So I'm like, oh, she seems like a good person. Um, you know, if there was cause for concern with how someone treats you, which, you know, we'll get into, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Jay-Z. I'll use those initials. Um, just because you gave a deep dive of that drama. Um, and I have an update on it. Oh, well, okay. But basically I was like, wouldn't it be cute, Dana, if like, you know, I went on a date with David, but like just as friends and she's like, be careful, Andrew. And I'm like, Dana, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know if he's going to settle down. And I'm like, Dana, I was just saying, go get a drink. Dana's really like, she gave me a whole lecture when we went out that night about like I'm disconnected and like I don't understand the purpose of life and I was like bitch listen I'm just <laughs> having my drink like she was like you know this and don't you want something more and I'm like listen like I can't solve all my problems in in one Friday night at you know over a drink well she Dana's invited when I come see you for a cocktail Dana you can come to Barbonia with David and I I love Please. that place in Chelsea. That's a good brunch. All, all you can drink. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I'm in the city a lot, as David knows. Listen, cause... we will go out for a drink. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll take a picture for Dana. And... <laughs> I'm in I'm in the Hamptons all summer. So oh, I heard. Oh, yeah. I'll here. visit. I'm I'm close Isn't to that the Hamptons. really close to. I am literally taking a five month residence in the Hamptons. Yeah. Yeah. So summer. again, Dana's probably like eating her popcorn now. Like, oh, <laughs> 
All in good fun. Oh, All in good fun. Speaking of which, Dana's already booked herself for the Hamptons. She's coming to stay. So. Oh, yeah. I heard your calendar is full with all your Hamptons. No, it's, it's really not. But people are just like, I'm going to come. I'm, I'm like, okay, everyone, like, you need, this is a real calendar. Like, yeah. I mean, nice of me to just say. That is sweet open, of you. Like, everyone just come. But I'm like, we need to have some, you know. like Yeah. Wait, do you want some drama about the Hamptons? Because I had a student who's from oh, Southampton. And people have spotted Ramona during the pandemic. Um, and it's not going to be surprising. She like, you know, wasn't following protocols, whatever. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull a Kelly and Rick Leventhal, uh, you know, getting into all the politics, but she likes to eat ice cream inside boutique clothing stores and apparently just has a certain attitude. That doesn't surprise me. Like she's very... The thought of seeing yeah. Ramona and the Hamptons this summer. Is that scaring not, you? It doesn't scare me, but I have no, I mean, where I'm going to be is literally down the street from both Jill Zarin and Countess Loanne. Like, Oh, you're going to be I, in the Southampton area. Sag. Yeah. Like oh, literally sag. I'm right okay. down the street. Having said that, like the last time I was the lot, when I was in Southampton last summer, I was with Elise Slane and like, I guess someone texted Elise and they were like, Ramona's right down there. Like, I guess it was a friend and like we were meeting her friend. I can't remember the details. And like the friend was like, oh, where you are? Ramona's right down the street. And I'm just like, as Elise and I were walking, she's like, I really don't want to pass by and see Ramona. I was like, honey, I, I don't want to see Ramona any more than you do. Like, it's this isn't like, I have no interest in seeing the woman, really. But yeah. it, it's kind of inevitable. Like, but all will summer, you and Lu are you and Luann going to get together? I'm assuming. I would like to. Yeah. I mean, like she said, she's having a Fosé party for her new yeah. Fosé. Her Fosé is like, good. Did you see on Instagram? I did a little video for her as a shout out. I need to try it. I, it's good. I will try it. I will literally try it. I will not try yeah. it on a Friday or Saturday night, but I will try it <laughs> some other time. Yeah. I will try Someone some reached time. out to me and they're like, do we need to mix her Fosé Rosé with liquor? And I'm like, I don't think that's the point, but I've done that with like, like, Lover boy is way too like non-alcoholic for me. So I, when I've been to lover boy events with Kyle and Amanda, I'm like, I will drink this, but I'm going to put vodka in it on the side. Yeah. It's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Also, cause I know, you know, the town hall, that's where Luann had her incident. Um, the townhouse. Yeah. Townhouse, the town hall. No, sorry. That's like a venue for performing the townhouse. Andy Cohen, I'm not sure if you saw this, but on Watch What Happens Live, he implied that male escorts go to the town house. Here's the thing. It's, I mean, first of all, I haven't been there in like, say, a year and a half, but it is that, I mean, that is kind of, well, A, it's the reputation of that bar. It is. And B, yes, I, I would agree with that. And C, I would say it's not as rigid anymore. Like back in the day, it truly was the bar. It's in Midtown. It's near upper, it's near where everyone lives. It's mm -hmm. in like the 50s. It's near. So, but it was the bar like back when people were in Chelsea and, you know, the West Village and all like the young hip people. It was the bar where you would walk in and it would be all old guys and all young guys. And the uh, young guys were clearly looking to be paid for for the night, to be dating a sugar daddy, and the old guys were. So it really was, I mean, you know, whether that, but yeah. Yeah, so it reminds Cohen, me. Yeah. And it still is, but it's like really more integrated now, like Sonia Morgan and Josh Flagg always go there when Sonia's in town. Cause like mm. they have a piano and like you can, hence Luann's thing, you can, you're not really- You could sing Frank Sinatra standards. It's not really like yeah. Josh Flagg and Sonia get up and sing, you know, and Sonia's had issues like that rumor that she got kicked out of a gay bar in Philly for singing on the mic. And, but you know, it's not really, but it's also a nice bar. I, I'm all about the townhouse. Yeah. I mean, I've been I'm to the Eagle it. in New York city. And let me just tell you about own men looking. The that's, Eagle and that's, the Eagle is like interesting. even more. This is like, oh, if okay. you've never been, this is, it's picture like upscale. Like it's like, 
you walk up steps and it's in a brownstone. It's like night. It's like, but it's not like hip and it's just like upscale. It's just picture Upper East Side gay bar with yeah. a piano. Yeah, it's yeah. Carpeting. It's not like the Ritz nightclub. No, and this ha- is yeah. like okay, you know, darling. Like, of course, Luann was there, darling. Yes, yes. No, I love your interviews with her. And okay, because I have to get to some drama with you, David. Let's do it. Well, I'm just curious about some who haven't been on your podcast. And I know you you network like crazy. So I know you've reached out to them. Okay, hold on to that question because we'll be right back. But first, a word from our sponsor. Brandy Glanville, why has Brandy never been on your podcast? Isn't that a good question? Brandy's like a little bit of a snob bitch, isn't she? She, now I don't reach out directly to technically to people anymore. Like I do have a team and that's not, listen, I book people in a lot of different ways, but yeah, I mean, I did reach out to Brandy directly way back when I was first starting and she, resp- I mean, this was like at night. I'm like, honey, are you drunk right now? She responded right away. I have to find these emails. And she said something like, thank you, but I'm not interested or something. Just whatever it was, I found it to be rude. Like there's a way to say like, thank you, you know, but I just found it to have an edge. So it wasn't her- like, thank you but I just have a really busy schedule. I'll keep, like, I'll reach out to you when I have more availability. Like the right. door wasn't open. No, and it oh. was, it was, it was, now granted, mind you, a no is never a no. I mean, you get no's and then they become yeses. So it's not like, but it was, it's not like we have any beef. It was just, but mm. the way she said no, just had this bitchy edge. So I responded, not nicely. I responded, I said, okay, you know, cause listen, I'm always in sales mode, honey. I'm like, okay, you know, I just had on Sutton Strack and you know, I mean, I, I name dropped some big housewife names and she responded, she responded. She's like, although, although very lovely, al- although they are, those are all very lovely women, it doesn't change my mind. I'm not interested or something like that. No. It, it's something like that. Well, do you know, Dana tried to have, brandy on to resolve their tension from the show and what how did that go no brandy i think ignored her from what i remember um so yeah it just seems like brandy's not really doing podcasting uh well she has her which, show but which you know it's and i really say this in all seriousness the best i mean people that people either listen to podcasts or they don't there there's two types of people Mm -hmm. and so like i truly do not listen to podcasts i will put that out there i don't got no time but love everybody who does but like the thing is i tell people that have other pot like kelly and rick kelly and rick do not do podcasts it was really hard to book kelly and rick and their thoughts are like we would never we would never go on a podcast we have our own well whatever we're going to say we're going to say it on ours and i'm like it's such the wrong attitude. It's yeah. like people listening to a podcast, like you have a captive audience and there's a gazillion people that listen to the Behind the Velvet Rope that do not listen to Kelly and Rick unmasked. And even though I have my agenda, you will promote your, so finally, you know how I booked Kelly and Rick? You know, you know the final nail in the coffin? The no. one, the only, Miss Leah Black. Oh, and Leah, gotta love her. Well, Leah and was Leah. like- yeah. Well, and she yeah. shares a commonality with them, which is they all go on Jeff Lewis's serious show. Leah texted them and said, "Wow, do what you want, but you have to do his show. It's Aww. not what you think. And after trying Kelly and Rick forever, the power of Leah Black, they responded in seconds. And then Leah's like, okay, they're doing it. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then Kelly and Rick reached out and I'm like, oh my God, the power of Leah Black. Yeah, yeah. Do you watch so- their rhoc recaps on youtube sometimes oh it's i love it i i i i I, I say it like that because i told kelly i watch all the time but i mean i'll start watching kelly yeah well let's just say i commented They're they're good yeah yeah and i commented on one and i actually hit on rick in the youtube comments because i think there's something about rick i'm like 
he's not very bad. attracted to he's, his persona. He's yeah. not bad. Out of like the OC husbands, Rick is, I'm trying to think who else is really for me. I have very weird taste, apparently. I mean, because I'd rather have Evan than Frankie Jr. But but I don't mind. But I mean, even like Eddie Judge doesn't really do it for me. Nah, I would pass. I like, I, I like Rick is not bad, not bad. Yeah, well, and I watch their recaps and I don't even watch the show anymore. I can't, I'm. That's what people say sometimes about, oh, I have a one person, I'm trying to think who said this to me. Somebody said that about me and Kim. They're like, I don't watch Jersey anymore. I just listen to their recaps. Mind you, Jersey is great. And I think that, this is just, I really predicted last season with the OC. I was like, these are my predictions. And I predicted, I'm like, one option is probably just to start over. So I'm not saying that I had this Roni idea before Bravo. I did not see it coming with Roni per se, but I did say the OC when they were in that, I was like, I, this, this could happen. I, I, I wonder. I wonder now, hmm. but I mean, what we can't go through every franchise and start doing this. Yeah. Like, what are they going to say? Like, I don't know. Well, but I, I have could... a prediction, David, about Rooney. Yeah. But you, I think, have more insider knowledge of it. I'm but... so curious to hear your prediction. Well, just because I listen to Ebony in a lot of different podcasts and she is, well, she has a background as a lawyer, as does Jackie Goldschneider. As does Meredith Marks. As um, does Emily Simpson. Yes, as does Phaedra Parks, I think. Um, as does my good friend Anna Kinkose is from A Real Housewives of Miami in the past. Yeah, I've actually the had... lawyers do well. I think they they do well. But what were you going to say? The lawyers yeah. do well because you can't argue with us. Like we will, I will come up like it's if you watch like Jackie, like even the oh, other Jackie's week, comebacks. when Jackie oh was God. like, but I, I don't understand. She's like, I wouldn't have had to have an analogy. Like, this is how lawyers are. She's like, I wouldn't have had to have an analogy about your hut, like about your daughter, if you didn't say something about my husband. It's like brilliant answer. Brilliant. Yeah. Or even when she said, I will always remember Jackie at the Jersey Shore, right before Melissa, I think, throws the cheese plate. Um uh, some, what did she say exactly to Teresa? She says, um, oh my goodness, like in that heated moment, um, oh, did you get that in jail? Like, did you get that knowledge in jail? And Brilliant. I'm like, she's, I love someone who thinks quick on their feet and lawyers, well, like Meredith was all about the facts. Like, and she said, I don't want Jenna Shaw at any of these events. And then it was like, just pushing her button every Salt time. Salt Lake is just so good. It's just so good. It is. It is. Um, but yeah, but what, oh, what, what, I was going to say. What's your theory? Oh, yeah, yeah. My theory is that I've heard they're looking into Ebony's friend group. So my theory is that Ebony is going to be the anchor in the new Roni. You um, think so? I think so. And I do think Leah has a shot if Ebony and Leah can keep a friendship. But. Well, I am not, I'm purposely not commenting because this is my shameless plug. Go and listen to my chat yeah. when it's out, which will be out but on Roni, because I talk about all of this and who has a shot and who I think really gets screwed from this whole, you know, two Ronies and all of that. But I, I wonder, I just, I wonder if this is now going to affect the OC. I don't know. I don't think it will because I don't think they would get rid of Heather. I mean, Heather's very controversial. Lots of people love her and lots of people hate her. But I love her on I your podcast. Know. That's what I'll say. I love her when she's by herself. She's she very good by herself. Go to YouTube and watch the videos. She had no makeup on. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she's a different a real Heather. person. That's a real, I mean, I'm not just, I mean, who comes on my show with no makeup? I, I, I come on looking like I rolled out of bed half the time, but people, and I'm just, I always tell people don't get glam for me, but like having, I don't know, that says a lot about Heather, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, she, well, she says that she does, she has admitted in the past when she first went on OC that she has a different TV persona. 
And I get that. I meaning, mean, right. Meaning that she's good at her job. Yeah, she's good at her job. She's uh, plugging certain things. I mean, like you say, okay, there's two motives. This is the David Yontef school of thought. Um, fame or money for why you would go on the housewives. Um, so I do think, wouldn't you say though, a lot of times it's a mix, like fame and money. It's comes a mix, together. fame and money. And then, okay, we have a rare exception of it's COVID and Kathy Hilton can't go to Europe like usual. And she's bored and her sister's on the show and why not film a few scenes? So Kathy Hilton doesn't want fame or, I mean, she doesn't need it. She doesn't need money. So there's rare, I mean, rare exceptions. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't see how else you can argue it. I mean, if someone has a ton of money there's so many people with a ton of money that aren't interested in fame they have great lives they would not why would you go and put yourself through so much drama i mean if you really think about it what life is this if you really break it down like you are anxious and in fight mode all the time i don't mean on the show i mean when you check your social media and it's i mean these these women check they check so oh, yeah. like if you have a ton of money why would you do that it's because you want fame and then vice versa and i'm not there's no shade i'm just saying i don't know you can't really convince me that you have signed up to be on the housewives for fame or money like i, I don't see any other box yeah. that is to be checked that's yeah. my well opinion. and like let's take though what just happened with new jersey like jackie using the platform to ex explore her anorexia and like I do think there's also a rare occasion where it's used to like amplify um something that you're going through that can help other communities right and yeah. I like what Jackie that she's being vulnerable in that way and like you know Heather Dubrow says Mm -hmm. You know, I came back in part to show like my kid's journey and like, you know, she has one, you know, daughter that's bi, one daughter that's lesbian and like, let's explore that. And, you know, although one she didn't realize was going to come out the other She So it's like, I think there's a lot of other reasons and byproducts, but, you know, I mean, I think Jackie wouldn't be there. You know, everyone says Jackie has so much money. Well, then you want fame. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you also could want more money, like, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you have a ton of money, you're not doing it for the first year, you get $60,000. I mean, that's what it is, period. So, I mean, eventually, but I don't know. It's just so, then that's no shade. It's just, why else would you be doing this? Yeah. There's yeah. a ton of people with a tons of money that would be like, I would never put my business on TV. Lots of people wouldn't, lots. And then- Right. Well, and that's why I think Roni has need... Roni has a hard time because of that, because yeah. of people who don't want to be on TV because of their professions. I think in New York, it's harder because you have a lot of men in finance and women in finance that I mean, a lot of financial companies just won't allow it. Yeah. By the time you hear this, like I have I mean, it will happen. My guest this, this Monday is Tiffany Moon from Dallas, who was on before, but she's back. And she said she has she had a con she had a clause in her contract that said you cannot mention my hospitals like the hospital was like you can't mention our name you can't mention the address she couldn't film within so many blocks of the hospital so like I mean that she's look at she's lucky she got that in her contract lots of times they're like but she showed her family but I mean if you can't show if you're a woman coming on and you are like my husband cannot film. That's the Sutton Strack thing where they just made her a friend. Like she earned her diamond in the second season. Like they won't go with you. They, you know, maybe if you're famous or, but the average will just be like, we, we can't, we're not interested. We were, and now we're not. We can't show yeah. you're having dinner with your husband. So with finance, it's a lot of times the companies are, it's like, it's in their contracts. And I mean, these men, you know, I'm saying if there was a woman, not that women couldn't do this, but if it's the woman and the husband, I mean, some of these hedge funders, they make like, you know, $2 million, $3 million a year, like, oh, yeah, not going on housewives in sacrificing this. Yeah, no, that's a risky investment, literally. Um, yeah. 
I'm loving it, David. I'm telling there's you. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Well, okay. And I'm also like coming from academia, I could imagine, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to have a housewife at Columbia University? Like the hottest thing. Can you imagine though? Like, I mean, it would be really fascinating, but like that to me is where an ebony, like ebony and that housewife would really hit it off. But that's Listen, where I think the tension is though in that group is- I've- I've yeah. always said, and it's not just because I'm friends with her in real the real world, or I truly can say, I mean, I get it. I don't understand all of the drama towards Ebony. I don't really, I get it. You don't want to talk about race and blah, 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 blah. But I don't really, like New York to me wasn't as bad a season as everybody claims that's yeah. just me I, I thought I it was a good really, season like yeah, I thought like, it was entertaining I didn't yeah. really understand why like the sky fell down and we had such a bad season and we had to revamp the whole thing I just I don't get it but it really happened I mean it was like a mass mass revolt you know yeah. well it, and it seems like a lot of those women because I've said this to Ebony before like a lot of them were just not open. Like they did not want to receive what she was saying. And it was like, and you can clearly see there's this like barrier. <laughs> They're, you know, not well, really interested in having a back and forth. Right. And like, like we even talked about this when she was just on my show again. Like, I think that, look, I think Bravo was in on it. I think Bravo wanted her to come on and we were at a place in the world. And I just think that Bravo, and the producers underestimated the some of the OGs, their ability to like just embrace this. Because if you would think about it with everything going on in the world, I'm sure they said, oh, this is going to be a blockbuster. We have this woman, Ramona, who's so, you know, we have so much stuff over, you know, 12 seasons about how much trouble she is as a housewife. And, racism here and there you know they everyone brings up these things Ramona said this they're like this is going to be the highest rated thing we're going to have this first black New York housewife come on and it's going to be a teaching moment for Ramona and at the end of the season Ramona is going to change and say like, like I get it and the whole world is going to applaud and then we're going to be able to keep Ramona for like the next 20 years and like and it's going to be a ratings blockbuster because really they that's all they care about. Let's just face it. Yeah. I just think that they underestimated Ramona and, you know, I guess Luann too, to like say, we're going to change and embrace this. It was the opposite. It was like, this is our show and this is how it works. And there's the door, bitch. And that, and then I think they underestimated Ebony of like, yeah, no, that's not how it's, again, Ebony's a lawyer. Okay. Like, you're not taking me out back. I got some other plans. So I just think it was a perfect shitstorm. But I do think in Bravo's mind in casting, they were like, the world has gone in this direction and we're going to cast our first Black housewife and, and, and we're going to have a teaching moment. And these two OGs, three OGs really, but Sonia kind of played, we're going to come around and at the end of the season, we're going to be a new woke franchise and head on into the future with the best ratings ever. That is what I think Bravo anticipated. They just underestimated Ramona and oh, yeah. Luann. And I think they underestimated Ebony as well. And- mm -hmm. Well, and then you have Leah, which don't even get yeah. me started on that. Well, and have you ever interviewed Leah? I don't remember. No, no, I have not. Okay. Is there an interest there for you? I mean, look, I would. She has a book coming out. I would interview everyone. I mean, Leah has a stick up her ass and probably thinks she's too good to come on my podcast, which. I mean, at this point, she shouldn't because I've talked so much shit about how inauthentic she is. But I would take her. But I mean, I now it's like, why bother? Because I talk about how inauthentic you are. And I do stand by that. I mean, she saw the first Black housewife ever for New York and said, this is the future. And I'm going to, you know, her brand with married to the mob and all that. And I'm just going to, and then when that wasn't working, she said, bye-bye. Cause I mean, I don't really care about any of this and I'm going to go with these OGs. So to yeah. me, that's total inauthenticity. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And I do think it's odd. Cause when she first came on, 
she was saying like how progressively aware she was. But it's like when push came to shove, like, and she had to be an ally to Ebony, you know. It's it, like, it, the, yeah, it was very telling. It's like the person who says like, I'm so rich and I have so much money. If you really have a ton of money, you're not talking about your money, period. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's a good segue. This is going to be real shady of me. Oh boy. But with the one, the only, probably won't come back on David's podcast, Jill Zarin, um, who I think anytime, even when I've heard her recently, and I just do this, David, to do some research for you to see if she's shouting you out still. Please. But she was like on Jeff Lewis and, oh, Jeff Lewis. Have you ever made a connection with him? To have him on my podcast? Yeah. I'd love to hear that. Well, first of all, we have, I mean, I've had on all the Jeff adjacents, Jenny Poulos, yep. Chaz Dean twice, Megan Weaver, who's on his radio. Oh, all I love Megan. Have, yeah. You gotta go. Megan, I told Megan, I'm like, you need to send this to Jeff. It's like, Megan, I got an architectural digest from showing up on my, wow. I mean, we're as like, no, not architectural. Yeah. Yeah. Architectural digest, which for a designer is like, she said she was, she gave this story about Leonardo DiCaprio's house and like the, the press went crazy. And I'm like, take this and show it to Jeff that like you, has Jeff been an architectural digest? Well, you are now Megan Weaver design from coming on behind the velvet rope. I've had everyone around Jeff, but like, Every Jeff is so nice. He's just like, you know, it's serious. It's more yeah. like, look, I, I, I do believe there's a serious component in what you can do and what you can't do. But one day Jeff Lewis will be on one day. Yeah. Yeah. I look at him with an interest too. I don't know how this, our whole episode has become who's Andrew interested in. But no, um, I I actually have said that I, I would be interested in Jeff Lewis. I, I don't mind like a little bit of like a rigid personality. Oh, yeah. Well, and I like that he it seems like he owns his drama. I, I'm all about owning your drama. Just um, own it. Just yeah. own it. So, yeah, Jeff, I, I'm not so I'm not so against Jeff. Yeah. yeah but OK, I know now because I will push this narrative forward. I appreciate that you addressed the Jill of it all head on on your show. So go to David's. Um, I'm pretty sure. Was that on your Patreon? No, that was on no. regular. Your regular. Okay. I podcast. broke down my feud with Jill Zarin. We had a feud. Yeah. Even though like listening back, I don't hear the tension. So it seems like a lot of it was off air as you describe. It wasn't like in the moment, like a bomb went off. No, it was after yeah, but coming up by the time this is out of now, I have a follow up to. I have some news this week. You'll listen. I have a follow up after this interview aired. All I'll tell you is I'll drop this teaser after I aired this. Like this is why Jill and I had a falling out. My phone did ring. Oh, and I was like, hello. It's like, hi, David, this is Jill Zarin. Did you just call me a bitch? That's <gasps> how the conversation started. So stay tuned for this episode this week. Is there some conflict resolution, David? I think there might be. I think there might yeah. be, but you gotta, you gotta, I so, mean. So it's not like she might not be back on Behind the Velvet Room. Listen. Okay. Again, I explain it all and like, okay, like, we'll have to phone, listen. The phone we'll did listen. ring and it was her, and that's how the conversation started. And I'm like, good, like, good morning to you too. Hi. So that could have been the therapy session that you desperately needed together. It was an interesting, and I talk about this on the episode. Like, I can't course, wait. It comes at like on the busiest day, I'm like in the middle of a hundred interviews, and I'm just like, you know, and it's. The guest that I was with that day, that was, we were talking about this, they were like, it was Sarah. And she was like, did you know it was Jill when you, I was like, that's such an interesting question. So this is a very nuanced, what happened um, after this interview aired where I called Jill a bitch. That is, now you got to go listen to that one, which okay. is coming this week. So there you go. Oh, it's going to be great. It's and it's part of the same episode where I talk about the future of Roni. It's all kind of tied together. Oh, nice, nice. Well, and I think that shows that, you know, even if someone has tension after an interview, it doesn't mean that there's never going to be a way to eventually resolve something. Or like you said, a no is never an, a definite no. 
I find in the entertainment business and from being in this business, doing this podcast for three years, I truly feel that, look, I feel like it's like any other business. There are bridges burned. That's not the goal. That's not a good thing, but just there are things that, that happen with housewives, with real people. Like, you know, you throw in, like I interviewed friend Dresha. I mean, none of these people I'm saying, I'm just giving you, well, we've had real people on it's, Often lots of people, agents and managers and networks. I've been on many Zooms where like, networks are involved. So just people are involved. So you don't want to burn bridges, but just like every other business, you burn bridges. But I have found in the entertainment business, there is so much drama yeah. and so much going on of so much that whoever hates you or is mad at you at 9 a.m. In most cases, by 10 a.m., they are over it and you are over it. And there is just another drama of who said what to whom. And it's just, this business is not for the faint of heart. So like if someone said, if you burn bridges throughout the year, like I, I'd have to literally think like, have I burned bridges with certain people? Not really, but possibly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, and I think know. it's fine to be juicy and shady. And isn't that something we all realize we're going to do, though, when we're talking to someone in pop culture is you're going to be a little shady. Like there's going to be a little drama. It's the entertainment value. Like, yeah. And like, for instance, like a publicist said two days ago, like a huge publicist said to one of my bookers, um, something like, look, it was someone that is not going to do interviews anyway. So it's all spirit, but they were like, oh, you know, this and that. And like, you know, David tends to quote unquote, go there. And I'm like, well, okay, sure. Like, I'm not going to do a, look, I have people on where networks are like, you can't mention this. Don't ask. Like I, I always, first of all, I'm a lawyer. So I always find a way to get something in without I never go back on my word. If it's like, don't bring up the name Erica Jane, I won't. I have a roundabout way to, to maybe get you to bring it up, but I don't go back on my word, but okay. Like if a major publicist is like, well, you know, David goes there. Great, I do. Like, we're not gonna do a watered down version of an interview. Sorry, like we have real questions here. I don't really wanna just talk about how wonderful everything is like you're on a reality show where you're paid to cause major drama there's drama and we're going to address it and I just want an answer from you I may not believe your answer the audience may not believe your answer but we're going to ask the question so when this publicist said this and then my booker was like you know I don't know if you're going to get this person I'm like great I mean I do go there I don't understand how I'm supposed to answer that yeah well and just to plug again that you and Kim D, I mean, how long, how many years have you known Kim D, David? What is it? Probably, when did the Pretty Mess book come out? Because that is where I met Kim D. I met her at a Erica Jane book signing. So whereas I cannot recall where I met Margaret Joseph, I can tell you that I met Kim at the Pretty Mess book signing. So whatever wow. year Erica Jane's Pretty Mess came out is the year that I met Kim Day, wow. which I think that's, what is it, like 2010? I'm just making that up. Yeah, something around there. That's crazy. Yeah, wow. Well, so may maybe it's later than that. I'm like losing, but like a lot of years, you know? Yeah, well, you know, as we conclude, I just want to thank first, David, you are welcome back here anytime. I will come back here anytime. I love your scoop. I just love all the topics we get to. It was... Like I'm going to have to come feet. next time thinking of other guys from Bravo that I would. Oh, I told you Steve Gold is my number one. That's my number one from Bravo. Okay. Okay. If I had, if I had to go there, that's who it would be. Yeah. Like, if well, I, if I could have a choice of anyone. Yeah. And a lot of the Bravo guys, even the straight ones, they really do love their gay fan base. Like speak of Joe Gorga. He owns he it. it. He loves it. Oh yeah. Yeah, Steve his chip is yeah. he Ooh. likes it. Oh, and you yeah. know who also I've had on my show who was just so sweet. It's like I don't get it, is Bobby Boy. Josh oh, Flags X. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. He's rumor a rumor is Josh. I just had someone on my show who said Josh like already has a new boyfriend. 
and it's another person in real estate and he's also like much younger. So I think Josh has a little bit of a type. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, and I think Joe Gorga got very comfortable when he was um, a Chippendales dancer. So it all makes you, sense. You love your Joe Gorga. Oh, I know the history. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> but, love um, Joe Gorga. Yeah. So I'm going to continue tuning in to all things behind the velvet rope, David. Your Kim D recap. Shout out, Kim. Kim is has a heart of gold. I'm like, anyone who has an issue with Kim can come to me because... People are DMing all the time and they're like, same thing with Catherine, but Kim, they're like, oh my God, I hated her for so many years on the show. I love her now that I listen to, I mean, and that's not my goal, but it's like, you know, you could still hate someone after the interview and people are like these weekly recaps. They're like, she's so honest. I just think it's, we're in a different time now with what we want out of reality stars. And I just think good, bad, sloppy. You just want someone who is honest. Exactly. So that's where I can give a shout out to my girl, Dana, that even though I call her a sloppy bitch and a gossip hound, she isn't, there's no angle. She's not like, what should I say for the next hour? That's appropriate. She's, she's herself. So bravo. Yeah, Dana. We're all owning our authenticity. And um, thank yeah. you also for being on camera, being professional and not zooming from your car. And we don't have to get into that, but the person who zoomed from their car will always stand out in my mind with you, David. Mind you, I have had three, two are non-housewives. I've had three that I can remember car. Oh no, excuse me. Four, four car chats. Yep. One housewife. I assume you're, you're thinking of the housewife. Yes. And I've had three non-housewives that have, it's, I mean, the video's up on YouTube. They're in their car. And I'm like, I guess, thank you for fitting me in. I guess is what I should say. But at the same time, if you didn't want to do this and I've had like moving car, I've had people say, okay, hold on. Like I'm getting out of the car. The car part of this is over. Now we're going into my house. If I lose you, I've had other people like have to pull over. It's, it's, I've had every scenario possible in a car really yeah. but you still get the chat and that david is where your expertise comes in handy listen you still get the point once that zoom starts it's like we've had bad audio we've had everything it's like the show must go on as they say it's like we're not we're not rescheduling because you're never going to be back we're just going to do this now and hope for the best exactly well hopefully our paths I know will cross again, David. Everyone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna DM you about all those interns things. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, people can listen behind the velvet rope on Apple, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. You can watch little clips on YouTube of all these reality stars. Mm -hmm. Just search behind the velvet rope podcast on YouTube, or you can follow us on Instagram at behind velvet rope. Five long days a week. Any day yeah. you could have a new interview. And your merchandise too. Listen, and I don't know what I've done lately, but these behind the Velvet Row mugs, this is not a shameless plug. All of a sudden I've been selling these. I like more at a rapid rate. So I don't know, like we talk about what shows are going to do what. Well. This, I cannot figure out what I've done, but here's a behind the Velvet Row yeah. mug. Well, and I'm going to get one to match my Ivory Tower Boiler Room mug. Oh. Speak about oh my God. promos, listen, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. like what else are you going to drink out of? It's just yeah. like- Yeah, that and also, can you, I know, I keep saying we're at the end, but can you just, do an improvisation. I don't want to put you on the spot, but what is that shampoo company? Because I love the way you plug that brand. Which one? The Man. one about like, it has lavender and you like start listing all of these amazing I essential think, oils. Listen, I think that's way. No, I'm not. It's it, way. It's way. Really? Re it's spelled like O-U-A-I. If anyone wants it, use my code, go to my podcast. It's no, but it's not a joke. It's really like high end stuff for like a cheap price. And yes, it's, but you sell so me good. on it, but that's how good of a marketer you are, David. Cause I'm like, it's this lavender. Sounds Who doesn't so good. Like, it's like this. And I'm like, this is literally the best shampoo, but I'm like, when I'm with David, I have to on the air, just be like, and with ginger and lavender and cinnamon and cardamom and you know, Every, orange. It smells yeah. delicious. Yes. Really, no, and I'm, I'm sure. I'm really a fan of it. I'm yeah. Not just and, saying that. and David, you, 
you have a good thing going. So I'm excited to see I where behind the velvet rope goes. So thank you again for joining. And this summer in the Hamptons, you were very close by. Oh, I will stop by. Trust You'll me. You'll come down to SAG. Yep. Yep. And hope everyone it. out there is probably who's listening. They are just, their heads are spinning with all of the dish you dropped. So good Enjoy. job, David. <laughs> thank you. Bye, thank David. You, thank you. All right. Keep in touch. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this Ivory Tower Boiler Room or True Crime in Academia episode. You can watch our video versions of our episodes on patreon.com slash Ivory Tower Boiler Room. Join at the price of an iced coffee or join as an Ivory Tower member and get some of our exclusive merchandise. I could not be here without an amazing team. So I'm Andrew Rimby, the executive director, and I am joined with Mary DePippi, our chief contributor, who hosts True Crime in Academia. It comes out on Tuesdays. Jaren Usta is our marketing director, and our two interns are Nicole Arguello and Kimberly Dallas. And I'm actually here with Mary. So Mary, where can they follow us on social media? You can find us on TikTok and Instagram at Ivory Tower Boiler Room. On Twitter, we are at Ivory Boiler Room. And then just search the Ivory Tower Boiler Room on Facebook and you can like our page there. Wonderful. And we, Mary and I and the whole team, hope you all are healthy and happy. And we can't wait to join you and you know, have you all join us in the ivory tower boiler room next week. Bye everyone. Bye.